Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Rachel Hall. I'm a holistic dentist from Brisbane in Australia. There's been a couple of things in the news recently or some comments that have been made on some of the videos that I would like to address. And one of them is, I've been told that hydroxyapatite has been banned in the EU. Well, firstly, that's not quite true. But if you don't know what hydroxyapatite is, then let me share that with you. It's a ingredient that is now used very commonly in natural toothpaste instead of fluoride because it's designed to help remineralize, that is to reharden your tooth enamel and help prevent cavities. And there was a study that came out at the end of last year that said hydroxyapatite is as effective if not more effective than fluoride in your toothpaste with none of the potential toxicity or side effects that fluoride may have. Now you may have seen recently, particularly if you're in the US, that the EPA have been told that they've got to look at the levels of fluoride in the water because there's been a big court case there, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. So is hydroxyapatite safe? Has it been banned in Europe? What is it? What's it used for? And what do you need to look out for? Hydroxyapatite is generally considered safe when it's used in oral care products. It's a naturally occurring mineral. It's found in your bones and your teeth, and it's used in toothpaste and other products. And it's seen as a beneficial alternative to fluoride, as I've mentioned. However, it's important to know that the particle size and shape does matter. Now there's a product called nano hydroxyapatite and yes nanoparticles have been you know in the news a lot and I can't actually talk about that. You all you know if you're switched on you've heard of nanoparticles and you know where they are and what the concerns are. Well in hydroxyapatite we get a product called nano hydroxyapatite and it has um, needle shaped forms and this has raised some concerns about potential toxicity but just like most things that are naturally occurring or anything that we're ingesting or putting into our bodies the concentration is key so the amount of hydroxyapatite used in products should be within the recommended limits to ensure safety there may be individual sensitivity and you know that's quite rare um, but some individuals may go on to experience allergic reactions or uh, other sensitivities to it. It's a naturally occurring mineral. It's used in a lot of medical products. It's the major component of bones and teeth. It's used for medical implants. It's used in dental materials and in cosmetics. Hydroxyapatite is biocompatible. That means it is compatible with living tissue and that makes it ideal material to use in these medical and dental um, products and devices. They use it in toothpaste, it's mouthwash, it's also in skin creams apparently. Uh, in the toothpaste, the hydroxyapatite, it helps to polish teeth, remove stains, and it remineralizes any porous and weak areas in your tooth structure. It's considered a safe and effective material, and yes, I know we've heard that about other things as well. Um, but let's have a, a look at the science here, and I will come back and put to rest this rumor that the EU have actually banned hydroxyapatite. So hydroxyapatite is calcium and phosphate, and that is the buildup of your teeth. I won't go into the chemical formula, I don't wanna bore you. It's a major component of your bones and teeth, and it's found in other parts of your body, such as apparently your kidneys and your inner ear. Well, that surprised me too. It's a crystalline material, and it's made up of small, hexagonal crystals. The crystals are arranged in like a little lattice structure, so it looks like a lattice fence, and that gives it strength and durability. Now it's a biocompatible material because it's similar to the minerals found in our bones and our teeth, and that means it's a lot less likely to cause immune reactions when it's put into the body or ingested. It hasn't been shown to cause any adverse health effects. Hydroxyapatite is biodegradable, so it's good for us and it's good for the environment. It means that eventually it breaks down in the body and will be excreted. And that means it's supposedly not gonna cause any long-term 
problems. It's also a renewable resource. It can be extracted from bone or synthesized in the laboratory. And this is the problem. When it's synthesized in the laboratory, they're making nano hydroxy appetite and it all comes down to particle size. So if that particle size is too small, this is where the concerns have arisen, but it's more about the manufacturing process and whether it can cause respiratory problems or contact allergies and so forth. So has the European Union banned hydroxyapatite or not? Well, the answer is the European Union Scientific Committee on Consumer Safety, the SCCS, has issued a final opinion on the safety of hydroxyapatite, the nano in cosmetics, and that includes toothpaste. They're saying it's safe when it's at concentrations of up to 10% in toothpaste and up to something like 0.5% or thereabouts, just under in mouthwash. However, the SCCS has also stated that hydroxyapatite, the nano one, should not be used in products that may lead to exposure of the end user's lungs by inhalation. So if that was in a tooth powder, then that would be of concern. But in a toothpaste, you are very, very unlikely, unless you're doing something very weird, to inhale the hydroxy appetite in the toothpaste. So as a result of the SCC's opinion, the EU has recommended cosmetic regulation to include hydroxy appetite in the nano form. And that doesn't mean it's banned. The EU has recommended that any cosmetics that contain nano hydroxy appetite um, is listed and it is subject to certain restrictions. And those restrictions will come into force on February the 1st, 2025. So I'm not really sure what those restrictions will mean going forward, and I'm sure we'll get some more information. But for now, it is not banned by the EU. It's certainly not banned in the US or here in Australia. And it's important to know that the EU's restrictions are based on nano hydroxy appetite in cosmetic products. Um, the use of hydroxy appetite in other products such as medical devices and dental implants, dental materials is not restricted. So the EU has not completely banned hydroxy appetite. It has imposed restrictions on cosmetic products. Given that information, I would still be advocating for toothpaste with hydroxyapatite rather than toothpaste with fluoride because the documentation with fluoride, which is not something that your body produces or requires, have shown too many variables and possible risk factors. And with the latest coming out of the US with the court case against the EPA, where they're now saying that fluoride in the water can pose a significant risk to the IQ of developing children, then I would rather go for an all natural product. And look, you can look for something that doesn't have nano in. For those who keep telling me hydroxyapatite is banned in Europe and therefore it must be dangerous, that is false. And I think we've clearly busted that myth. If you want to know more about natural toothpaste and natural products that you can use, you're going to want to check out this video right here.